Well, well, well. You guys are gonna never guess what this is. This is the other pump I ordered about one month ago. So, okay. welcome to Canada. Just remember, <laughs> overnight in Canada is five days and 200 bucks. Just remember that. Yeah. Okay? Five days and 200 bucks. So, uh, it was about a week late and I paid $124. You remember the saying, hell froze over? We got the pump. Yeah, so I'm going to be calling UPS and uh, getting a refund for, for that because. Uh, you know what they're going to say to you? What? Eh? Welcome to Canada. <laughs> That's what they're going to say. All right, so we kind of got started early, earlier today. Uh, woke up, another rainy day in Canada. What can you do? It's huh? the shits today. I know. That's so, terrible. Uh, we're, we've been working on the veggie uh, diesel part of things and. Here's one of uh, the other parts which came and then I was going to send it back. I ordered another one. The other one was wrong. We, it didn't come with these black fittings yeah. and we had to track these things down. Race we had car to, stuff. We had to drive an hour into town to get Race these three stuff. stupid fittings. One, two, you can't see it on the other side. And three, to go into these other, like Badge said, what are they called? Okay, the race, race car, car fittings. fittings. Okay, these are what we said was a &N fittings, right? Well. This is a race car piece, this regulator, so what would they put in there? Race car fittings. So this is what they call an A&N. No, it's not O-Ring Boss, it's an A&N fitting. So when you get your race car parts, you gotta keep more race car parts because you can't play with the other people. You have to have race car parts to play with race car parts. True, so this right here, ladies and gentlemen, it's is the, uh, this is a pressure regulator. Yep. Uh, this is the return side of things. Uh, basically, we're putting a, hairball in your shower drain exactly. right here and we are we are creating pressure which the engine needs because why we need 35 psi yeah the reason okay. i was going to send this thing back by the way is because it's 40 minimum psi so yeah, it, it, we're going to crank her up just a bit it runs really good at about 40 psi too so we're leaving it so anyway this is for I know Sue Girling was wondering what in the hell we're doing. So this is what this is for her. So this basically is the same setup that was on the truck originally. And remember, it was bolted to the side of the filter housing. We got rid of that. And now we have the two lines coming up from the injector or the return lines because they had the two feed lines, right? We have the two return lines now that are in the head that they never had before. Because now when Jack purges it, he can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt that he's got the fuel, the veggie oil drained, uh, purged out of it. Where before you couldn't do that because they used a deadhead system. And also, let me just pause you for a minute. If there's any mechanics, throw a comment down below if you agree. Z-Man. That it is impossible to prime a diesel engine when you run out of gas uh, stock. So we got rid of that whole of system. That and now if I run out of gas, big whoop de doo You just turn the key on. Exactly. And the air bubbles just go right through, right through. back to we the don't tank. Even, we've been running this for just about two weeks now and we don't even have a purge valve on it. We never bled it. We never fuel, put a, any fuel in the filter. I know you guys in the 7.3s are just crying now. But that's the way it is. This is a really, really, really good system. So um, that's what we did. So we got the return lines here, coming up pressure regulator. We're gonna set this at 35 PSI, and then it comes back here through, remember default. Default, it goes um, to veg oil, electric, it goes back to diesel. We got the diesel line hooked up here. And then we got the feed in here. This is the feed line going in, so this is the veggie line. Look at this, see that? What are you know, cooking hot not, dogs over now you know what you're doing? We're cooking hot dogs. Now we gotta, blame nut bar for this one because he showed me this a couple years ago stupidest thing in the world but it does work so we want to get this line up to 150 degrees right so this line here will be around the 190 so it'll always keep that line warm always and by the way this is a flat plate heat exchanger yeah. this is coolant this is yeah. a, a fuel line so it's a uh, veggie oil right uh veggie fuel line so basically the vegetable oil system You'll see, it, you'll see it in, in another video because we're not going to install it today. Put it in but essentially it's going to go tank to a heated filter housing. Then it's going to be connected to the heater hose and stay hot and come all the way up 
until it hits uh, actually this one. Yeah, and, and then it's going to stay hot again and go back here and yeah. then right into the engine. Yeah. So all is well over here in the vegetable well, oil good. world. But uh, anyway, what we're doing here was you wrap this with about three or four wraps of ordinary old tin foil. The stuff from Walmart, the cheap stuff, hey? Look at that, see? That's Walmart stuff. <laughs> Send your money to me, Walmart. And we're going to wrap this up and that'll retain the heat. Now, where I where Billy found this out was uh, doing the heat trace on uh, water lines for the winter time. He says, oh, just put the heat trace there, wrap it in tin foil, and it works fabulous. You know them $200 uh, garden hose you buy for your RV? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Get a garden hose, get a heat trace, Put the heat trace underneath the tin foil, wrap it all up like that, put some tape on it so it don't unravel. Don't, don't like supper? Don't like supper, man. All right. So when Let's get Jax to work is here. going down the road and he's getting hungry, he just comes out and lays a hot dog on there with the bun. <laughs> Ten minutes later, takes her off. It's all cooked and uh, all right. everything's good to go. Sweet. So, so now what we're going to do is this is duct tape. This is duct tape. Actual dusting this is tape. A, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Dean duct knows what tape. this is because Dean, this is the schoolie, was in uh, heating and air conditioning this business. This is the real duct tape. You've not that green for, stuff. And not, qu not quack this quack. This is duct tape. This is for heating duct. That's right. Not quack quack. This is no. for D U C T. And this is uh, heat resistant and it's got the good glue on it. So, what we're going to do, this is just amazing. I know you guys, I tell you, if you're not laughing, you'll be crying when we're done. But this is just so good. Because it's tin foil with glue on it, basically. And you just take it off like this. We should use that for the potatoes. Oh, yeah. And then we put this under here like so. And then you just wrap that around it. And that stuff will never, ever come off. Right? And it just keeps it all nice and toasty warm. Now, the funny part about this, you know, is because we were talking about jocks. And he always said... No, I'm not going into cold weather. But now he come up with this crazy idea he might go snowboarding. Yeah, I like so, snowboarding. Anyway, you know, of course, me, I do all kinds of stuff and don't tell them. So what we did is we got the heaters all hooked up with a Vasto. So this, tomorrow, this morning it was around 45, 50 degrees. I said, let's try the heater out. I fired on the Vasto, and within 10 minutes we had heat in the cab. Yeah. Like really, really good heat. Not your run-of-the-mill heat, like really good heat. <laughs> so I'm more than confident that them heaters will keep the inside of that bus. We got the one in the driver and the one over here. We disconnect the one in the back, but I kept it so when he calls me next year and says he wants his heater back, I'll give it to him. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I was going to sleep last night before I was going to sleep, actually, and I was thinking, man, I really miss snowboarding and surfing because that's I grew up surfing and snowboarding and skateboarding and anything with a board, I've done it. So I said to myself, well, driving around is expensive, so what if I got a season pass, maybe a multi-mountain season pass, like the one that has, um, it was at Vail, Copper Mountain, Park City, I think Mammoth is a part of that. What if I got one of those? And then just kind of hung out in the parking keep lot. Laughing. Huh? Yeah, I could, turn, I could turn the Wabasto on. Yeah. Keep the keep everything really, warm inside warm. and be like a oh, snow yeah. bum. So, I don't know. If anybody uh, is an avid skier, let me know your thoughts or a snowboarder. Just I'm a snowboarder. That's what he does. Really? Yeah, he goes to Grouse Mountain with his art because he lives in a van, right? Down in Vancouver. Uh huh. And he goes to Grouse Mountain up there, goes skiing, and camps out. It's cool. Oh, that's fun. So, anyways, that's an idea. Food for thought. Man, that looks cool, don't it? Look at that. Man, oh man, I might get a full time job here yet. <laughs> Just so you know, we're not bullshitting you. We're, we had this whole fuel system apart. We haven't done a thing to it. It was running yesterday. True. And we haven't primed a thing. We never took off a fuel filter or nothing. True. And we're going to show you how fast this thing starts. Especially you 7.3 guys are going to go nuts. So we make sure our switches are on, the key's on, the two lights are on, right? And right now it's pumping fuel. And we got 40 PSI, right? I can't read it from here, but uh, we yeah. do have pressure. Okay, so now this was totally empty. There was no fuel in this thing at all. Oh, look at that. And it starts right up. And look at how fast it clears the air. Yep. Like, you know, you guys in the 7.3 know exactly what I'm talking about. Or the 6.0s or... Yeah, yep. like this thing, we didn't prime a thing. Nothing. Yep. So, uh, to reiterate, the old system that we took out, if there were an air bubble, you would be 
dead in the water. Yeah. You would have to go to a mechanic if you didn't know how to do this. Yeah. Sometimes it can take a couple hours. It involves a, a Schrader valve, which is just like what's on your tires to let some air out. We don't even have the Schrader valve in it. We took that out too. <laughs> yep. We don't have a we don't have a bleed system in it at all. Yeah, there's nothing. So it, the only thing we got left to do now is put the tank in tomorrow and put the two few, uh, lines for the veggie oil. Yep. Everything's hooked up. The re, the return's hooked up. The solenoid valves are all hooked up. Wabasto's hooked up. The Wabasto's working awesome. Yep. So uh, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. And by the way, uh, in common English, uh, if anybody wants to look up a video that we did, it's basically a fuel bowl delete video, right? What? If they want to learn yeah. how to do it. A fuel bowl delete for 7.3. So right now, Badge is adjusting <clears throat> the fuel pressure regulator. And uh, as you can probably see by uh, the monitor there, the, uh, the gauge isn't working so well. So we're gonna have to get a different type of gauge, an oil filled gauge, liquid gauge, I guess. Um, so it looks like we're just uh, putting the finishing touches up here. Oh. 